What was it about me that made you know I was the one? I kind of knew. And when I say that, people are always like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I, you know when you just have this feeling of like, I know I'm going to pass this test. Like, I don't even have to study. Like, I know I'm going to pass the test. It was like that kind of a feeling. Like, I can't really describe it. The whole time you're looking at me like, this guy doesn't even know that. Yeah, so it, yeah like kind of. So it's, it's not even crazy. like... crazy. I don't know if God told me it. and I, Like, I don't... It's just this, like, feeling that I can't explain that I just knew that we were gonna be together. What's going on world? My name is Dean. And my name's Nikki. And you are officially tuned into the Black King, Black Queen podcast, where we explore a variety of topics, questions, and pressing thoughts. Our goal is to inspire, encourage, and educate every listener by having meaningful conversations surrounding black love, black excellence, and black legacy. With every unique discussion, we unpack the good, the bad, and the ugly that most individuals will experience while on this journey called life. At the core, our message is to choose purpose over fear. We encourage every listener to to let go of whatever has been holding them back and step into their individual purpose on purpose. As well, we express the importance of taking this step because there is always someone who could benefit from a lived experience. So, in the words of my husband, there's an entire audience out there waiting on your yes. So we challenge you to choose purpose over fear today. Now let's get into this episode. Let's get it. Let's go. Yeah. Today's a very chill day. It's Sunday night. It's mad late. Man, I don't been up since like seven o'clock in the morning, went to church, all that good stuff, came home, had a whole long day with the girls and yeah, now we're here doing this. How you feel? <laughs> had a whole long <laughs> yes, day with the girls. Yes, I had a girls. whole long day with the girls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been playing with them all day. Yes, not. <laughs> okay, so what have I been doing? <laughs> Watching your traction on Instagram no, I from been. your Instagram reels. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> haters, haters they all go, the laughs. Haters, you go they go check hate. Out his last recent haters, post. they go hate. <laughs> they go, but, uh, I, <laughs> on the other hand, had a very long day. Why? I woke up with the children, got them ready for church, got to church, went grocery shopping, came home, cooked seven different things, meal prepped, packed out all of our lunches, and got the kids to bed. I showered Long the kids. Day. I played with the kids the whole entire you didn't day. Didn't play. With I, them I had to get up early. Day. I had to set up church. Yeah, that's a big tear job. down church. It's MD a big job. the band. It's a big job. We were like, it, what are we talking about? We like, it's a big job. I'll give you credit. Out my mind, like I'm sure body's you aching. Man, like, I won't discredit you. you it did, is what it is. You did have a long day. <coughs> Sorry, I got a little bug, yo. But yeah, anyways, that guy. So today we're just about to get into a nice little conversation. Um, we haven't told you guys our story, like and how we met and all that good stuff. We've been doing a whole bunch of talking, talking about this, talking about that. But if you like, do you guys even know us? Like where it all began for us? So it's like we're gonna unpack. All of that good stuff in one setting. I think we've touched on different points throughout various podcast episodes and all that stuff. But this is going to be the episode where we just kind of like break it down. Yeah, feel me. <laughs> How you feel? I feel good. I'm ready. Let's go. All right, Get so into it. Where did where did our story begin? You, you started out. Okay, so our story began. Why did I start around the word story? Our story began while we were a couple of teenagers, I guess. Um... I think, okay, like Dean said, some of this has been mentioned before. So if you hear repeats, it, it is what it is. But um, so we were teenagers and we met one specific night at a church service, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, okay, so at the time we were both talking to two other people and Dean actually came to the church to talk some sense into me because the person I was talking to was not listening or I wasn't listening or whatever the case was, but we actually met because Dean was supposed to be the problem fixer. Um, so we ended up talking that night on the phone and that conversation lasted until like God knows what time in the morning. Uh, mind you, all we're doing on the phone is fighting. We were like, fighting. Was, I don't guys. even know. I was like, yeah, bro, are you stupid? You better, <laughs> you better get your ass in shape. Like, it was crazy. Like, we uh, literally <laughs> argued that entire time. I think we had some laughs in there and some like casual comments, but majority of it was arguing. And at the end of the conversation, I think we secretly left being best friends. But I don't know. Did we leave mad? 
I don't I don't even I don't remember. remember. Too long ago. Too long ago. But anyways, we had that conversation and I think that really like kicked off everything. So from there stemmed a friendship. Um, not purposefully, but it's from there we kind of stemmed up stemmed a friendship and we just kept talking and then there were points in our friendship or there was a point in our friendship where we like literally stopped talking entirely because the people we were talking to were not comfortable with that part of our friendship and we were like okay whatever like I just met him it's fine I could do that Mm -hmm. and then somewhere down the line we ended up talking again like I don't know how I don't know when the first time was but our friendship just like rekindled and we got so close again and then it it just started to move really quickly and it just started to make Mm -hmm. sense suddenly like I don't I remember you picked me up from the bus stop one day and like I was going to um, university and he picked me up and then would drive me home. And like we were just chilling. We were best friends. We go for walks and all those sorts of things. And we really, really built a friendship out of that. Today we're out here celebrating Black Love, Black Unity by Excellence of Black Power. So right now we're having our Black Unity shoot where our Black King. Hey, Dean. Look, I, I can't even believe I'm, I'm about to say this right now, but... I just can't take it anymore. Darnell and I haven't been on good terms for a really long time now, and I honestly just can't take it. Our marriage is dying, and we're in need of some real support, like from black and married couples, you know? I know we're not the only ones that would benefit from this. You gotta do something, because there is a real need. We need this. Studies show that over the last few decades, marriage has been a declining institution within the black community. In 2020, only 30% of all African Americans were married compared to the 48% of all Americans. As a result of the pandemic, many couples were faced with a strenuous challenge of having to spend countless hours in isolation with their partner. This for many was not only difficult, but caused tension which could have been avoided with the support of a healthy community. We often devalue the importance of a healthy community and the accountability that comes with it without realizing that it is one of the key secrets to the success of a healthy marriage. So I ask you, why do marriage alone when you could be a part of a community like this? At Black and Married, we've created a space where couples can connect, communicate, and collaborate. Couples can also find community, build lifelong friendships, and gain a source of support. A place where your voice and story will be heard. So again, I ask, why do marriage alone when you could be a part of a community like this? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Black and Mary. Black and Mary. Mary. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to remember everything. I can't. I can't remember everything. This is like 10 plus years ago. Like, I don't know, like 15 plus years ago. Maybe 17 years ago. <laughs> Somewhere around there. Like, but um, yeah, and one day, <coughs> Nikki texted your boy telling her, oh telling my. me that, you know, shoot, she feeling your boy, all that good stuff. And then um, it's like a couple of years into our friendship. And then I was just like, oh my God, like what? we have here drove to her house we're just like what in the world is going on and um yeah it w- was like we were in a phase where it's like we couldn't really be together because i had a lot of pride and um i didn't want to pursue nikki because of who she was dating uh previously and uh, i was just like you know what Mm-mm, this can't happen so i went on with life uh i was doing this that and everything out there um, Nikki was the person who I actually talked to about all my other female friends. Like we got so tight where I was able to confide in Nikki with other girls about other girls. I mean, and then um yeah, like, I moved to Alberta. Nikki went to Alberta for school as well, and uh, we grew a little bit closer. You want to talk about them about Alberta? Yeah. So while we were out in Alberta, that was. <coughs> A little bit of a different experience for me only because like I went there alone like I didn't have any family there I didn't know anybody there except like Dean and his family so I kind of depended on them to kind of be like the people there for me so like his uncle was really supportive of me like he helped me fix my car if it needed like just stuff like I didn't even know 
you change oil on cars. Like my parents just shipped me a car and (laughs) expected that I knew how it worked. I had no idea you had to take it into the dealership every now and then. So it was really comforting having that there. But I think because Dean was my closest friend there, I had like expectations of our friendship to be the same way that it was here. However, when we were out there, When we were out there, he made a whole set of new friends. And there were times (laughs) where these friends were not comfortable with me being around. And there were times where... Girlfriends. Yes, they were all female friends. friends. They had problems with me for some reason. I'm like, first of all, I just got here. Like, I don't don't want any trouble with anybody. He's just my friend and I expect him to be just that. If you guys want to pursue something with him, I'm completely fine with that. But of course, these but things question, weren't hold translated on, hold on, well. Question, question. Yeah. So, would you have actually been completely fine with that? Let's say when I was in BC, not BC, Alberta. Alberta any one of those females, I was just like, you know what? I'm pursuing one of them. How would you have felt at the time? I think I would have been bo- not bothered, but I think I would have been hurt because I expected you to give me all of that time. Mm. But I think I would understand it. I like at the same time, because while we were out there, it's not like you were pursuing me exclusively. Mm-hmm. Like you hung with me here, you hung with them there, you hung with them there, and you hung with mm-hmm. the others there. You know what I mean? So it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't like you were spending all your time with me. So if you were to have a girlfriend out there, I would have been fine. I would have mm-hmm. got over. It. I would have made do like the same way when you're like, I'm chilling with Olsis today. Like I would have I would have understood. Well, okay, all right, yeah. So then um yeah we we're in Alberta. I end up leaving. Mm-hmm. And then um, Nikki stayed out there for an additional year. Then that was long. I moved to BC. And that's when everything got real. So 2016, I moved to BC. I was out in BC for two years. After year one of being in BC, um, I realized, yo, I got to get my life in order. BC actually slowed me down. Like it, it calmed me down from, you know, the wildlife and <clears throat> chasing around females and all that stuff. It allowed me to get kind of focused on like, you know, my aspirations and what I want to do with life. And it actually jump started a lot of my dreams, man. So that was a good thing. And then I remember um Nikki came down to BC. And then when she came down to BC, she chilled with us for like a week or so. Two weeks? Probably. It felt oh, long. two weeks. And then when she was leaving, I was like, you know what? In my mind, I don't even think I told you no. this. But I, like in my mind, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to let this girl leave again without like... <laughs> making some type of move. So what had happened was previously there was another girl I was kind of talking to stuff happened with her. And I was just like, you know what? I'm done with this. Like, I just want to marry Nikki. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And yeah, man, a couple months later got engaged. I called her mom immediately when I found out that I wanted to make that decision, called her family. Nikki had no clue. A couple months later happened, got engaged. She was shocked. And yeah, we're, now here <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, um, i cannot believe it literally i think i said a couple of weeks ago like can you believe that we actually got married and have two yeah, kids like, one of whom is four yeah it, it's, what is going on it's honestly crazy let me ask you something though like what was it about me that made you know i was the one like how do you know well people f- ask that question all the time yeah. how do you know this person is the one like And I think for other people, that answer could come very differently. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't think there's one way to know that somebody is the one. But for me, I... Okay, very... Okay, there's a couple of things. Yeah. One of the things where I had asked God, because we fought a lot back in, like, our friendship zone over... Silly, silly, silly things. I don't even, I can't even name them right now, but we fought a lot. And some of those fights were just like, oh, like just pulling so much energy out of me that I was just like, I don't need to be dealing with this if this is not going to go somewhere. Yeah. And so I remember taking it to God, I think maybe on two occasions. And I was like, God, please, if he's not for me, if this is not for me, please just remove him in that way. Because I'm here fighting with somebody who I'm not dating and I'm losing hair over it for no reason. Like, I, I just don't want it. So, of course, long story short, he did not remove him. And here he is. Um, Another thing was um, I kind of knew. And when I say that, people are always like, what does that mean? Like, I don't know. It's like 
I, you know, when you just have this feeling of like, I know I'm going to pass this test. Like, I don't even have to study. Like, I know I'm going to pass the test. It was like that kind of a feeling. Like, I can't really describe it. So the whole time you're looking at me like, oh, this guy doesn't even know that. Yeah. So it, yeah, like kind of. So it's, it's not even crazy. like, I don't know if God told me it. And I, like, I don't, it's just this like feeling that I can't explain that I just knew that we were going to be together. But even mm. prior to that, I remember like, Back when we had BBM, mm -hmm. remember BBM? Dean used to ping me all the time. If you guys like, don't know what ping is. Ping. For people that don't know, like that app, those BBM, and when you ping, it makes the other person's phone vibrate like crazy. Yeah, so yeah. he would be like pinging me all through hours of the night, the day, like just pinging me to get my attention, right? And through that, I'm taking it as like, okay, like you're annoying. Like, I know you like me as a person. Like, I'm not thinking anything into it. But one of my sisters, she was like, he likes you. That's, it's obvious. Choose him. <laughs> it's fine. He's the one. Like, she was literally like saying all those things. I don't even know if she remembers that. But she was like, Nikki, these are signs of flirting. Like, he likes you. Do you not understand these kinds of things? So like, it was like that thing that she kind of like put in my head. And funny enough, she was the one that helped him find the or did she help you find the yeah, ring the but ring. like plan the whole like a, as a surprise i found it but there yeah you know, she like she was like, i was in bc so she was my person in toronto and i was living with her at the time for school because she was closer to home so she'd be like come in the room sometimes she's like nikki do you like this thing ring like what do you think of this and i'll be like oh that one's nice like i like that but i'm like oblivious to the world like i didn't think anything of it because i just didn't it's not in my character but i like i said i i knew that I was going to marry you. Like, I knew we were okay, going to so at I, least try a thing. Okay, so let say. me ask you this. So you said, like, you asked God to remove me if I mm -hmm. wasn't the person, right? So some people are like, how do you know it was God or whatever? So i ask you this. What if God didn't remove you, but we en didn't end up working out? Would you feel frustrated with God in that situation? Or so what would that look like? So if you prayed the prayer, like, yeah. God remove this gentleman from my <laughs> life if he's not for me but i was around but i ended up not being for you like how would you have felt then that whole time mm -hmm. <coughs> i would have been very frustrated because in those argumentative moments i was very just like this is taking so much energy out of me mm -hmm. especially in the season when you were here and i was in alberta mm -hmm. and i was like going to school we had time difference it was just stressful and what we're arguing about god knows what but yeah <laughs> it was just so yeah i think i would have been very frustrated if it <laughs> turned out to be yeah what's crazy is nothing. for me i knew i knew she was the one i don't know how i knew but like i got a lot of confirmations man so there's one particular story i always tell yeah i was at a hotel with a girl and um like we weren't doing anything and then we we're talking 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 or whatever and then um this is the only person that i actually told or one of the only people i told about my feelings for nikki and the way how me and nikki were kind of moving um and i was like fighting through my feelings i'm like yo i don't know if this is for real i don't know if i'm supposed to do this like i don't know like it feels like she's the one but like i just don't know and then on the tv there was a sitcom playing and it basically said, I don't know what you're doing, but all I know is that Nikki's the one for you. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> like what in the world is that? And it was like clear as day. Well, like the person I was with felt a little like, oh man, so I guess like she is really for you. And then there's another another instance where I was with um, one of my OGs at the house, uh, my house. And um, he came to me, he's like, yo, I'll tell you this right now. I see how you and Nikki are moving and don't make the same mistake that I made. And I was like, yo, what mistake did you make? She's like, I messed around and married the wrong girl and it has costed me like every single day of my life I live in regret. Man. And I would not want that for you. So he's like, yo, I see how you and Nikki are. Like that is your wife. And I was just like, bro, hold <laughs> up, wait a minute. And then at the end of the day, like Nikki was the, the only person that, actually could see my forever with mm -hmm. and she's the only person that like, scared me like i was out here doing a lot of things but i would always have to come back i felt i don't know what it was but the need to say Be to nikki like open. you know what 
<laughs> we're not even an item. I know. But I was out here doing this. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but this is what I was doing. And the further we got in our friendship going into like, all right, are we going to actually be a thing? Um, I remember one particular time I was like, yo, I, I had sex with this girl, yo. And Nikki was like, oh my God. And I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. Man. I don't know. Like, you want me to be your boyfriend or whatever? I think I just talked about it. One episode. She's like, hell no. I was just like, all right. But it's, it was crazy, man. I was just like, damn. Like, I really, I was fighting, man. I was fighting. You know, when you're you're young, you're a guy. Like, you're, you have all these options around you. And you're just like, you don't know what to do. Because marriage is such a, like, crazy decision it's such an important decision and you don't want to make the wrong decision Mm -hmm. so it's just like i never wanted to like do this wrong the wrong way yeah so i was afraid you know because i was like (laughs) man first of all you i knew you had my heart but i just want to give it (laughs) i just want to give it right and then boom man I, i couldn't fight it and i was like you know what before it's too late let me secure the woman of my dreams man and yo yeah that was that was that so yeah if we didn't end up together, I know I would have, like, if I was to miss out on that opportunity and mm-hmm. see you go with another person, woo, that would have been tough. Mm-hmm. Question, let's say, okay, so let's say I did go end up with someone else and you marry someone else. Do you feel like in the back of your head you would have been like, man, like, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. Like, Good thing I don't have to apologize <laughs> to anyone. Like, uh, Dean is for me. <laughs> like, I know Dean's my guy. <laughs> I think so yeah Yeah? i would feel that way because crazy (laughs) because okay so like our relationship or our friendship whatever we call it was just like it was so like natural and Mm -hmm. so it just made sense Mm -hmm. right like we never had to work for anything we never had to work for laughs we never had to (laughs) work for you know being there for each other oh you want to go on a walk it's 3 a.m okay let's wait until the sunset like everything just kind of made sense so if we ended up with two different people it'd be like trying to recreate Mm -hmm. these like good moments i don't know would that person understand me the same way yeah i don't know like that's tough like so going back like is there anything that you would have changed like with how everything was like with how much uncertainty there was Mm -hmm. in that particular gap because to be honest like i would advise women to run away from that situation like if <laughs> if if, so, if a woman was supposed to come to me and say like Yo, this is a situation i'm going through with this guy right now i would advise them to run but because we were so young i get it like it yeah. feels like it was a long time it ago does, yeah but like knowing what you know now like would you like knowing what i know now, now? <laughs> like, or like what knowing what i know now because, okay, but I'm a different kind of character. Mm. I feel like I know how to protect myself in my heart. I'm very boxed in. I don't give everything. Because I think there was at a point you're like, yeah, but you're not giving me everything. Like, how am I supposed to know? Yeah. Like, I remember that season too. Like, how am I supposed to know you're the one if you're not giving me everything? Well, you're going to have to stick around to find out what the rest of me That's is like. That's I was like. talking? Like, yeah, because geez. I'm just like, and this is when you're here. What do you want from yeah. me? Like, I'm on the phone. There is no more I can give to you. So, like, I'd be like, there's nothing else I have left to give. So, if you can't know me for right here, then we're, we're just stop calling me now. Stop, stop talking to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but would I advise anybody else to go through that it's very it was an emotional type of situation and i feel like if you are easily broken or you fall quickly and you're not able to like hold yourself up and like keep yourself grounded don't do it (laughs) don't do it because having to see somebody that you like and or you care for (laughs) taking other girls out on dates or going to their house after church on sundays or talking on the phone with them facetime taking pictures posting on instagram like doing all that stuff like if you can't handle that don't do it yeah that's crazy because i witnessed all of that and i was still able to be an actual genuine friend outside of that because our friendship actually came first i don't Mm -hmm. think i showed bad vibes i don't think so yeah i I, I, I wouldn't like later on like once like the feelings started to like you know show up and i started to manifest certain or say certain things then like action started to change but um so what you guys don't understand is i knew how nikki felt right this time 
during this time. Like I told you, I was running from a particular situation. And uh, yeah, so I would do those things like go out with females, um, have females all over my story. Like I didn't want nobody to know nothing. <laughs> like I didn't want, like I didn't want, like <laughs> I didn't want anyone to say anything about me. I didn't want no one to put me and Nikki Together the same in the same sentence. I, I was like, hell no, this is not <laughs> happening. I don't care. Like I don't care if they could see the chemistry or whatever. But for some reason, That's all we're every time. <laughs> I would go out with any other girl. Like, they'll be like, so, what's up with Nikki? I'm like, <laughs> what are you, you talking I'm here with you, fam. Hey. Like, but yeah, like, I'll just be out and about, like, just trying to do things, Um, just get over this Nikki hump. And uh, what I realized now, it actually did more damage than good, more harm than good, uh, unintentionally, because I was running from what I knew was purpose. So... This is a wow. This just hit me. So when you know what your purpose is or who you are supposed to be with, and like every second of the day that you don't pursue that person and you entertain everybody else, you're now breaking another individual. Because at the end of the day, there's something in me that let me know that those girls were not for me. Although I was fighting my best, like my hardest to like not go down Nikki Road, like <laughs> Nikki Way. It, it did nothing but um harm. So if I could go back and change things, would I change it? Probably, yeah. I would have loved to know what it would be like if I actually just was like, you know what? From the back. From the top, like, yo, this is what it is. But maybe, like, who knows? Maybe we would have got together and, and, then, and things would have just went south. Because like, even <coughs> in that, like, even in you saying, um, <coughs> like, you were doing all of those things to run away from me, I didn't know that. Mm. I just thought it was, we're not doing that. Like, just leave it alone. Like, we're not good. I didn't know you were actually trying to, like, fight to, like, remove those feelings or whatever it was. Yeah. So, to me, it's kind of like, okay, like, we don't want a relationship. We're not going to ruin our friendship with titles. We're not going to add expectations. We're just going to do this. You're going to know I like you. I'm secretly going to know that you like me, but we're just going to keep it where it is. We're going to be friends. So, in my head, that's what it was. So, that's why I was like, well, if you got with another girl, I'd mm-hmm. be fine because at the end of the day, our friendship comes first. Like, I understood our friendship. Like, we never once had a conversation like, yo, we're going to date or we're talking or we're exclusive in any kind of way. And so, that's why I'm also just like with girls. Like, mm-hmm. they get into things with guys and they are, they're not <coughs> exclusive, but mm-hmm. then they start having expectations and then that's really what ruins everything like you start having expectations from this guy when he never once said like we're an item or we're gonna we're gonna pursue this and then in turn pushes the guy away and then you're left like well we were you know okay so this is what i want you to do then so how did you do that because there's females out here that are just like man like i like this guy i don't know where he's at but mm-hmm. like i know where i'm at <clears throat> he knows where i'm at how do i like maneuver this relationship like what do i do like uh, tell, uh, if you don't know tell them what you like what did you do what How? i did <clears throat> was understand my role like oh, i yeah, didn't see, that's big. i didn't that's big that's <laughs> like, big <laughs> i did not try to be something that i wasn't and i didn't go past where he was at so there's one particular time where he brought up a, a wedding like mm-hmm. he brought up if we got married we would have I, my groomsmen would wear this and the, your bridesmaids could wear this and we'd have this as a color scheme. And I was like, oh, okay, like this is cool. I'm vibing with that. All right. So can our flower girls do this? So I'm starting to add my little input. One night, nice night, went to bed, good. Maybe a couple days later, I was like, remember we were talking about like the wedding? Like, what do you think about this? And he got irate and went left. Like, I'm not talking about this. I don't want to talk about this. Da, 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 da. So I was just like, what happened? Mm-hmm. Like, Am I having amnesia? Like, what took place? Like, where did we go left? And then I, from that, I understood, okay, he's not ready. He wants to talk about it on his own time. Cool. Just know I'm never bringing that up again because I have too much shame for that. Mm-hmm. And we're just never going to go down that road. And I don't think we ever really did Mm-mm. talk about that again. And that mm-hmm. is what it is. I knew when I went to Alberta that we were friends. I didn't. He didn't leave here with us dating. So... For me to now assume we're dating because now we're hugging or we're going on long walks. How? It's, you did not get the position. You cannot operate as though you're in that position because now you're adding expectations to something that shouldn't have expectations. And now you're just ruining something that could have potentially been built nicely slower, like yeah. what we did. You know what I mean? So understand your role. 
play your part. If it becomes too uncomfortable for you, end it. It's not a race for everybody. Yeah, it's, I, it's really not. One thing is, I also say is that I think you chose you. Like so, for anyone going through those situations, I feel like you gotta remember your self worth, man. Like, mm. um, I remember, remember exactly who you are, and like, don't accept anything mm-hmm. like other than what you know like, God has for you. It's easier said than done, <clears throat> but there's gonna come a point where you're just gonna have to look yourself in the mirror and just be like, "Am I worth this?" Or like, am I worthy of more? You have to choose yourself, man. Like, And knowing your role is super key because what happens is lines get blurred. Man, it's crazy. Like, girls used to always say, yeah, man, I want, I, I'm want, i one of the man them, yo. Like, I'm from Toronto, so I was like, yo, I'm one of the man them, yo. Like, yo, like, all these guys like me. I don't do this. I don't do that. Like, yo, I don't, I don't really like the guys like that. Like, I, I could just be one, you know, a guy's friend. You know what I'm saying? Two weeks later, it's like, yo, so what are we? So, but it's just like, okay, like, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> wait a minute here. Like, what were we just saying two weeks ago, right? So, it's always it's just knowing your role, man. Yeah. Don't let the finesse get you. Mm-mm. Like, you know, follow uh, his actions and follow them long enough because somebody could fool you for a short period of time. But if they're, if they're the same, like, over a longer period of time, chances are, like, yo, this is who they are. Mm-hmm. Like, get to know that person inside out, the good, the bad, the ugly. We saw that real mm-hmm. early. Like, we killed a lot of stuff, even before relationship, like, um, <coughs> era, mm-hmm. in our friendship era. Oh, like, yeah. I knew this girl, like, inside out from fr- being friends. So when it came time for us to be in a relationship, which was the engagement day, it wasn't weird. I was just like... I feel like I'm just with my Bank best friend, yeah. friend, right? Like, so, yeah, man, knowing knowing who you are is really important. What do you think um, the importance is of having God as a foundation in your in your, in your relationship? Because you said at the end of the day, you, you went to him mm-hmm. first above everything else. You went to him first, and then you're just like, if he's for me, keep him here. If he's not, let him go, like... How did you get to that level where you can, you know, put faith and trust in God like that in regards to the relationship? It is very, very, very important to go to God. God is literally our creator and he knows everything. Like he was the one who ordained what this thing should have been. Like he wrote our story. And so I figured if I went to my creator, the one who has the master plan in his hand with my whole heart that he would do The thing that was best for me, that needed to be done for me, you know what I mean, in that situation. So I feel like because he didn't remove Dean on the two occasions that I went to him, I felt as though, okay, there's something that I need to stick out. There's something that I need to stay in this for. And yeah, that's what I had to do. And it was the right thing to do. And for me, it was like um, knowing that Nikki was the one, I knew it because when you're in the will of God, like and when God confirms something, there's a peace that comes with the situation that lets you know that he's in it. Mm-hmm. So immediately after I proposed and everything, or even when I called your mom and told her, like, I wanted to I can't believe did that. Uh, propose to you, get engaged. <laughs> like, I had no, like, cold feet. From the thought of engagement till the wedding day, I was never nervous. I was never like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I was so sure mm-hmm. because like, I had a piece that I knew, knew. like you, you were the one for me. I didn't need no one to tell me nothing. Mm-hmm. I knew you were the one for me. So what's crazy is like, I've talked to a lot of guys <laughs> and they'd be like, yo, when I proposed, I, I was so nervous. I went to bed. Shaking. I stared at the ceiling for like <laughs> 20 minutes. Even like before the wedding day, like, People are, oh my God, like I got to use the bathroom. I remember our wedding day, everyone's like, yo, I know you're nervous. I'm like, bro, I'm trying to get down this aisle and see <laughs> Nikki, what's popping? Like, are you guys crazy? It was just like, we've been here, done that. Yeah. Why? Because I was just assured that, yo, I'm in the will of God and I know I'm marrying my purpose partner. And there was an automatic piece that came with that uh, I cannot describe. So how do you know? persons for you and how do you know that you're in the will of god there will be a peace that comes over you that you have never felt before and then you will know that god is in it like mm-hmm. so yeah like, well said what about you like 
Well said. That's that's, that's how. Did you have that feeling? Like of uh, the, I more, know this. I, I know like God I, is here. Like I, mm. I knew that from <clears throat> forever, from even before you proposed to me. Like I, I just. Like I said, guys, it sounds very cliche. It sounds phony, but I literally just knew that Dean and I were going to be together. Mm. And because I went to him, God, and he did not remove him, I knew that there was something that I had to stick out. And because like my life, my life has been very easy prior to like adulthood and getting married and all that Mm -hmm. stuff. Like I had a pretty simple life. So when I started going through ruckus with Dean, I was like, what (laughs) is this? Like I didn't sign up for this. (laughs) Yeah, like I don't go through stuff like this. Like what? It's my way or the highway. You know what I mean? And and because, I, like I said, I went to God about it and he didn't remove him. I felt as though, okay, there was something that I need to work on. I find joy here. I find safety. I find somebody who listens to me. I find mm-hmm. somebody who actually cares for me, somebody who is supporting me, just as my friend, taking me here, picking me up, buying me stuff. Like it, it was just a good little friendship that we had. And then I just knew that there was something I needed to stick out. Yeah. So we traveled across Canada, did all that we had to yeah, do. We did a lot before. We did like, a lot. We, we did a lot. I know. Like I was treating low key. I was treating you like like a wifey. But this before. is why like, your friends were feeling like, ways about it. But I was like, hold up. <laughs> the thing is, I didn't take it as that. I just took it as you being like a really good mm-hmm. friend because actually, it wasn't only me. Like mm-hmm. if you bought me a gift, you had some other yeah. OGs that you bought gifts for too. Yeah, so facts. I was like. Granted, I might have got the better gift, but like, <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're probably right, so I don't know. Though. Like, not intentionally. Yeah. Not intentionally, guys. No intention. <laughs> but like we all were treated very kind. So I say that you were a kind mm-hmm. person and you had a lot of qualities that I really, really loved. I especially love the fact that we butt heads. Like I love the mm-hmm. fact that we would just like argue and be like, yeah. You like me, or you'll fall for me, or no, you're the whatever it was, the disagreements. Like, I loved arguing for some reason. It's like a toxic trait of mine. So, (laughs) I really enjoyed that and it was attractive. So, I stuck it out um, until it got a little bit more serious on the back end. But yeah, Yeah, I just knew it was going to be it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut Mm -hmm. you. I just knew it was going to be it. And then the morning of the wedding, we did a first reveal Mm -hmm. before the wedding. And I was just so amped. I was like, Mm -hmm. ah. I can go see him. I've never seen my dress before. I've never seen my hair like this. Like, oh my god, I'm and so everybody fancy. was like, I remember being in the in, in the in the limousine or whatever. People were like, yo, yo, you're, yo, you're gonna go crazy. I was like, man, I'm. Uh, you guys are soft, yo. <laughs> like, yo, you're like, yo, you're gonna cry. I'm like, bro, where's my wife, bro? <laughs> like, yo, what are you talking about? But nah, like, yo, that's that's honestly that's wild. Okay, so and another thing that um that or I knew like this could potentially be it for, for me. Mm-hmm. The way how our families meshed, man. Oh. Like, the family dynamic yeah. was super, like, super lit. We're, like, we're close, like, and we come from the same place. Like, mm-hmm. her background is basically my background. We believe in the same things, all that good stuff. So, it was just, it was, it was literally an easy transition. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I was around her and her family when we were friends, mm-hmm. like, not even looking at each other out mm-hmm. like that, right? So, our story's a little bit different. Yeah, there's some people, you know, like, you meet someone today, three months you're married, do you know the family all like that? Do you have years of the family like how I did? Maybe, clearly not. <laughs> but, um, like, I'm talking about our situation. And, yeah, that was dope. I remember going to her dad, you know, when I went to her pops <laughs> to ask for his hand, uh, for her, his daughter's hand in marriage, you know, and ask for his blessing, I went on a, yo, Pops, let me tell you something. <laughs> like, me and your daughter, me and Nikki, we're lit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like <laughs> that's that. she's my everything. I'm telling you, I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is the woman for me. God, let me know. I'm pretty sure you guys know. We've been through ups, down. We travel together. We do this together. And it's funny. You're like, we come from a background of like, your know, hardcore apostolic mm-hmm. Christian parents. And I don't know how. I don't we know were how. able to travel like across Canada. So we went from we drove from Edmonton to Toronto back in like 2015 together. And ain't nobody saying nothing. Yo, yeah, we were stopping the hotel. Like, I, was like, <laughs> I didn't know. I'm like, yo, that could have been dangerous. <laughs> like that could have been scary hours, fam. <laughs> like <laughs> what? That's scary like, hours. Yo, they allowed us, yo. And then on top of that, I'm just like, yo, hold on. My parents really let me bring a girl like yeah for, real, for two weeks i'm like yo i'm a man, man now. <laughs> what are you what are you saying yo? 
I'm like, yo, I'm going pops. Like, I know. Even they let my parents let me travel to see a boy. That yeah, was crazy. Yeah, like that. Like, and what? and you, if you guys are probably going like, what are you guys talking about? Yo, bro, our upbringing wasn't, wasn't like, mm-hmm. yo, wasn't like that, yo. Like, we're guys, though. I'm a guy, so it's a little bit different for me. For me, it's not really a thing. I'm more like, yo, how did it hurt? <laughs> like, Nobody girls, said anything. Like, from where we come from and our church background and our upbringing, Girls got it the worst. Yo. We were always reckless, guys. Like, yo, we were reckless. Nobody cares. It was like, you guys are going to be where you're going to be. But the girls, mm-hmm. like, I was surprised. Yo. And just from that alone, I was like, yeah, everybody knows that yo, she's in good <laughs> hands. Because you know, your boy, your boy got it. Like, you know what I'm saying? But nah, yo, like, that's just a little bit of our, our story. Anything else you want to add? Like, I love you so much. Ah. Thank you for choosing me, even though I knew you were going to choose right, me. Right, that's crazy. And I'm so happy to be doing mm-hmm. life with you. Um, it's been an amazing five years. We're in year six now, eh? Yeah, I know. Holy Bro. moly. She said A like a real Canadian, yo. A. <laughs> We're in and year the thing six is now, it, eh? It rolled off the tongue. I didn't feel no way. <laughs> I would have had no idea. Yeah, but, real maple leaf, yo. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy to be doing life with mm-hmm. you. Um, I'm grateful for the experiences and the journeys that we went through to bring us here right mm-hmm. now. And yeah, we have a testimony that we can share with people. And I'm so happy about that. Yeah, I have a testimony, Lolly. And yeah, what I love too, like I'm, I'm obviously happy that I get to spend the rest of my life with the woman of my dreams. But I'm happy that we just keep it real, man. We don't mm-hmm. come out here. We don't fluff. Guys, first of all, <laughs> the fact that we're recording right yeah. now, you guys like really have no they idea have none. <laughs> what was happening before we pressed record. About like, an hour. Like, we're just like, yo, I'm not doing this. We're not doing this podcast. <laughs> we're not doing this or whatever. And like, we're getting at each other, just like, yo, this, no, what are we talking about today? Blah blah blah. Ray ray ray. It was not good. Like the energy in here was on low low. I kid you not. Like. <clears throat> It was it was about to be like a fight, <laughs> like so. The fact that we're so sitting weak, here talking, I'm so right weak, now, I forgot. Like, we don't even remember that we were we were low key <laughs> scrapping just a while ago. We weren't on good terms. Like when we pressed record, and I was like, "What's going on, world?" Yeah, it was like, a, "You'll forget you, then, yo." What's going on, world? I was just like, "Bro," but we show up, <laughs> like we show up, and at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's real, man. We show you guys the good, the bad, the ugly. Cause trust me, it's not always gonna be good. Mm-hmm. But if you remember your why, if you remember the purpose and the reason why God brought you guys together and you guys hang in, stay committed to the vow, stay committed to each other. Trust me, it gets beautiful and it will be beautiful. Even through the rough times, man, you find beauty in it. We found beauty in us, the, the midst of a scrap just by mm-hmm. coming on here and talking. Just keep it real, yo. Like, mm-hmm. it is what it is, mm-hmm. yo. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like, I love that about us. Keeping it real all the time. And yeah, you guys already know my message, man. There's an entire audience out there waiting on your yes. So I'm challenging you today to choose purpose over fear, man. Step into that thing that God has assigned and ordained for you to do and for you to be. I'm looking forward to you being the absolute best version of yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to you just crushing it, man. Doing everything that God planned and ordained for you to do while you're here on earth. Why? Because there's an entire audience out there that's depending on it. And I don't want to see you let them down, man. I'm trusting and believing that you will see it through you got this you guys already know man it's your boy dean and your girl nikki and we out peace